As one wades through ancient Indian history, one finds astounding information that makes one sit up and check what has been passed off as Indian history. One finds that, Alexander did not defeat Porus, Rigveda is the oldest literary work by man, Rama, Krishna and other persons mentioned in Indian Puranas are not fictitious characters, but real persons who lived, Indian history dates back to thousands of years, all major religions have borrowed extensively from Hinduism, many of the sacred sites of these religions were Hindu sites, Sanatana Dharma, Hinduism was prevalent throughout the world, in all world cultures. That Kaaba is a Hindu temple, Muslims worship Shiva Linga, 786 is Flip Tom, Vedic practices are followed in Kaaba, the temple complex in Kaaba is after Vedic construction, I have written and also more on these subjects. The concepts of Shiva, Vishnu, Subramanya, Devi. All are found in world religions. Now more on Kaaba. An ancient Sanskrit couplet from Haris Riswara Mahatmya mentions the footprints of Lord Vishnu being sanctified in three places. They are Gaia, India, Kaaba, Saudi Arabia and Vibari slash United Kingdom Lord Vishnu's holy footprint consecrated at three main centers in the world, namely one in Gaia, in India, the other in Mecca, and the third near Shukla Tirtha, the Diaburis. The Vishnu statue in Britain in the opening part of the introduction to the volume titled A Complete History of the Druids, 1. It is stated, it will be necessary to give an explanation of the pillars, the circle and serpent. On page 9 of the same book it is observed, this serpent was the symbol of light and wisdom. Its name Seraph, particularly is so expressive. The term Seraph is a malpronunciation of the Sanskrit term Serp, i.e. serpent which indicates that the ancient most language of the British Isles, as also of other parts of the world, was Sanskrit. On page 15 of the same book, it is asserted, it may rationally be concluded from the various opinions of the best historians that this island received its first inhabitants from the eastern parts of the world. Since people from the east, i.e. India, were the earliest inhabitants of Britain, they naturally erected a statue of Lord Vishnu, the progenitor of the world. The name Isle of Anglesey in Britain derives from the Sanskrit name of Lord Vishnu as Angulesh, i.e. the Lord of the Angul country. The British Isles were designated Angulston, i.e. a finger size, finger length country. If the European continent is likened to a palm, then the British Isles appear to be an extended finger. Therefore Sanskrit-speaking explorers named it Angulstan. It is that same term which later came to be pronounced as Angul and that is England. The book on Druids mentioned above states on page 36 that many temples of the Druids are said to be yet in part remaining in this island, i.e. the Isle of Man, and that of Angelsea. Many of them were made of extraordinary large stones as at Bury and Stonehenge. Page 54 describes, a Bury now known as a Vibari, is founded on the more elevated part of a plain. The entire figure of it, the ruins, is a seraph or winged serpent transmitted through a circle. The outer part of the grand circle is a vast and lofty vallum, with a very deep ditch on the inside of it near 80 feet or 45 cubits broad. Its diameter 750 cubits, its circumference 225 cubits, the enclosed area about 22 acres. Within the ditch was formed a circle of 100 enormous stones set upright, which were generally 15, 16 or 17 feet high, and near as much in breadth. Out of these 100 stones, 44 were still visible when Dr. Stukeley was there in the year 1722, whereof 17 were standing and 27 thrown down or reclining. Ten of remaining had been demolished by Tom Robinson in the year 1700, the vestigia of the rest were still discernible. With this mighty colonnade of 100 such stones in perfection, there must have been a most agreeable walk between them and the ditch. It is scarcely possible for us to form a notion of the grand and beautiful appearance it must then have made. On pages 56 to 59 is added, most of the houses, 
walls and outhouses of this town are built with the materials of these stones that have been fired and broken, let us walk out now by the southern entrance of the town, passing the Vallum. This is via Sacra, the summit of the Overtone Hills is the Hakpen, a compound oriental word signifying the serpent's head, which is 4,000 cubits from the Vallum of Aburi. The people have a high notion of it and still call it the sanctuary which when in perfection was without question the most glorious temple of the kind which the world has ever heard of. That it was really a temple sacred to the ever-blessed and undivided trinity, every circumstance, every consideration tends to persuade us. The name itself of Aburi, Aburi, potentates, signifying in the language of its founders the mighty ones. The temple was a gigantic and glorious sanctuary of world fame, and the Vedic trinity of the three mighty ones, via Brahma the creator, Vishnu the sustainer and Shiva the destroyer were all there in the form of gigantic statues. The Druids supervised the temple. The above description makes it clear that the Isle of Anglesey was famous in the ancient world for its majestic and massive temple depicting the Vedic trinity in gigantic stone statuary as the divine governors of the world. This information when coupled with the information from Muslim sources that there were 360 idols in the temple, indicates that Lord Vishnu was surrounded by an entourage of other deities, of which Lord Shiva was one. But the Muslims being iconic lasts, they destroyed the idols of other deities, while Shiva's emblem, a round, cylindrical, dark, black red stone, they retained as a central, featureless object of reverence. Check my earlier podcast Carver Ground Floor Plan Vedic.